Hey. 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 Episode 39. 39. Of Alex and Jim Analyze Billy Joel lyrics. If it was the age of a person, it's an age where people get very sad about things they haven't done. Right. No problem with that here. We've done it all. Yep, we have done everything because we're very we've done old. all 39 of Billy Joel's songs. That's right. If we were a person, we're very accomplished. We've done exactly what we were meant to do. If we were a person, uh, this would be episode 43, but we'd say 39. Yeah, and everybody would laugh. Everybody like, okay. It's episode 39. Again, we'd say. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh. <laughs> Oh, buddy. I uh, talked a good to, one. Oh, yes, I did. Uh, I talked to a friend about our show, my friend Dave, and uh, he's not here. Haha, <laughs> Dave's not here. Um, he, uh, I said, so what are you, what are you thinking about the show? He, <laughs> he, go, he said he finds, and I'm paraphrasing, so he'll tell me if I get this wrong, but he finds the puzzle part where you look at the picture is yeah. often diminishing returns because he's <laughs> like either none of us know what it is so right. just tell them just tell them what it is it's we've done this long enough <laughs> or it's how does he not know what this one is just tell <laughs> wow and he goes so it's never it's never the sweet spot every now and then it's the sweet spot but there are okay. times when and i there, but I, and then I said, in my defense, there are times when I'm like, well, Lord, he's got to know what this one is. It's weird when you have it inside your head because you created the puzzle. Right. You know what it is. You know all the steps that got you there. Yeah, that's right. I don't know. <laughs> you know our friend, Rindy Hartman? I do. Who um, is Rindy Hartman? Well, she is well. Lovely lady. Years ago, we used to play dungeons and dragons and then oh, a bunch of winners and uh we also used to play this one called gurps generic universal role-playing system wow and it's like dungeons and dragons but with simplified rules that allow for more gameplay and social interaction it, it's a fun version of it okay good and i used to gm game master mm-hmm and I was fond of creating puzzles that like the villain created. And every right. now and then, because I'm not, listen, I'm not that bright. And every now and then I would create a puzzle that was so dumb that she would yell at me. <laughs> <laughs> the best. And she wasn't wrong. She wasn't wrong. If you can get Randy Hartman to yell at you, that's pretty good. Yeah, so I try real hard, and there was always just at least one puzzle where I was like, I just need a puzzle here. And one of them was a plate and an O. And you had to figure out, we were talking about Play-Doh. <laughs> <laughs> wow, that's like the, the example puzzle at the yeah. beginning of SAT. Yes. They're like this. Now here's 10 more yeah. that are real. And now if you can't get this one, you're you shouldn't be in school <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> put down your pencil and go get a shovel <laughs> exactly yeah, but, let's, but first let's explain shovels <clears throat> uh, <laughs> and then also this weekend uh my, me and my friend dave we went and saw the remaining monkeys in concert great is that how it's billed uh it's mickey and mike Okay. It's Mickey Dolans and Mike Nesmith, and it was a great show. It was a wonderful show. I'll bet. It's nothing but joy with those guys. Absolutely. And and they're smart. They had really accomplished musicians backing them up, so you got a strong band. I've, I've always found it funny that Mickey, however much of a musician he was or wasn't, we can debate, but no matter what the song is, he's got a tambourine in his hand. God bless. Yeah. Yeah. And Mike is getting on in years and he spent the entire show in a chair. Um, Fantastic. The joke, the thing we thought too is when it comes time to find out whether or not you're getting an encore, 
if Mike gets up and walks backstage, there's no encore. <laughs> That's it. That's his one get up for the night. Yeah. And so once he left, you're like, okay. And they did a different version of an encore, knowing that people like an encore. They did a song and then Mickey goes, hey, you want to hear a couple more? Didn't even give us a chance to do encore applauding. More or less letting us know. You want to hear a couple more? Because then we're getting the fuck out of here. Just so you know. Right. Yeah, let's let's drop the pretense. Yeah, yeah. We got to see uh, Patty Smith in Central Park. Brad, rocking out uh, at seventy-four years old, um, but it was a very <laughs> clearly like a post-punk experience. Yeah, because it was first of all, it was Capital One presents Patty Smith uh, in Central Park. It was free, which is great. Bomb. Just a free summer stage concert. Uh, and then there were vendors along the back. It's probably a few thousand people, not a ton of people. A good number for the uh, like a park show. Sure. And then it's like the vendors. I basically I sat on the grass, the astroturf, and I uh, had sushi and watched Capital One presents <laughs> Patty Smith. <laughs> I thought, well, that probably isn't what she had envisioned um, <laughs> based on the music. And the lyrics, uh, but she still is a uh, very burn it all down. Yeah. God yeah. bless. And she did an encore. She yeah. never sat down. Yeah. So God bless you. This rage keeps you young. I hope. Yeah, she's Patty Smith. If she's alive, she's mad about it. So. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and that's what you want. Yeah, absolutely. Joan Jett's like that. You see any concert with Joan Jett? She is kicking your ass. Yeah. She, uh, she uh, when she was fighting cancer, she was bald and she looked tougher than ever. <laughs> no doubt. She looked just amazing. And you were like, damn, there's your cherry bomb. My God. <laughs> um, so you're right. I picked a great song. Uh, she's always a woman. Yeah. What Already a- weird. Yeah. A weird phrase. To me, I should say. She's always a woman to me. Still weird. Yeah. <laughs> Still a weird thing to declare about some. Like, um, that is true of any woman. <laughs> I think. I mean, barring any transition talk, pronoun switchery. Yeah. Uh, I don't. I read the lyrics a few times. I listened to the song. Very beautiful, of course. But it's a weird thing to say, like, well, I guess we should wait. Yeah. We'll dig um, in. I'm a little raspy tonight. I don't know if you noticed. We went to a trivia night last night. Came in third. Nice um, but there was a lot. First time in a loud bar in a long time. Yeah. So a, lot of, a lot of crosstalk and shouting. And uh, I'm a little rasped up. Do you find, by the way, getting reused to using your voice in public raspier quicker um so far yes this is like the first time i've been in like a loud place trying to talk to people i've noticed that with stand-up um doing shows zoom shows it took me a while to figure out how loud to be and i would lose my voice (laughs) yeah I would lose my voice on Zoom, and then I would think, was I just yelling at people? <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> yeah, or just have I just not spoken at all, and my uh, neck muscles are out of shape. <laughs> yeah. Entirely possible. Yeah, and the mask honestly doesn't help, because I wear a mask at my job, my day job, a lot, and it would destroy my voice until I realized not to do the fabric ones. It's the medical ones that are good. Yeah. Oh, We'll get right into the lyrics, but I want to mention real quick, uh, your show has been on fire. Oh, good. Seth. Thank you. Yeah. So funny. Um, and now that there's not a maniac in the White House, I can watch your show because I couldn't before, to be honest. I always felt I was I always thought to myself, man, I would rather be making iPhones in China than. <laughs> writing jokes like under these conditions yeah the same for sure yeah 
it felt, yeah, it felt a lot more obligatory and also fruitless. Yeah. It is like the difference between yelling at a dog and yelling at a cat. <laughs> and that was four years of yelling at a cat. <laughs> which you, as you know, gets you zero places. Yeah. The cat doesn't care that you're yelling. Other people are just bothered by your yelling. Yeah. If you yell at a dog, it might turn around. Okay, quick side note. I have a cat named Dolce. And Dolce will go into rooms that we don't necessarily want her in. We have one room that's an animal-free room. Sure. Uh, just so that there could be clothing in there that doesn't have stuff on it. <laughs> Smart. And she'll go in there, even though we don't necessarily want her in there. And this is what I do. I go, Dolce, come on, don't go in there. And she looks at me and turns right around. And it's almost disturbing. Weird. She will look at me, go, walk back out. And then I'll go, good girl, pet her. And, like, and I don't understand your behavior, Dolce. Yeah. Uh, our cat will, our apartment now is two floors. So uh, all evening long, we're downstairs. Cat happy, sleeping on the couch. We go upstairs to go to bed. The cat doesn't follow us upstairs, but stays downstairs and screams <laughs> most of the night because she can't find us. Yeah. No matter how much we're yelling her stupid name, she's downstairs going, you're ghosts now. <laughs> this is terrifying to me. I'm like, well, you saw us walk away. Oh. Uh, counterpoint, maybe you guys are ghosts. Oh, man, that'd be so rad. <laughs> it would be pretty rad. <laughs> I hope so. That would explain how we got this place. <laughs> yeah, you had it the whole time. We had it the whole time. And that, uh, that young couple that also lives here, they're probably alive. <laughs> oh, yeah. That's why yeah. they never talk to us. Okay. Yeah. I'm That's gonna like push a book off the shelf. Uh, yeah, you should do that anyway. Better than reading. That's why I love that people are so afraid of ghosts, and but all they do is like, ah, uh, a book. <laughs> a book fell off a shelf. Maybe you and I write a movie about an uh, older couple who has nothing but rare first editions, and then it is a horror <laughs> film. <laughs> ah. I <I'm> know, Bill. <laughs> <laughs> Ah, that's that's great. Uh, she is always a woman to me. Always a woman to me. Uh, oh. Very, very pretty, pretty song. Uh, so why don't I start? It's a hell of a lot of lyrics, by the way, which is nice. Hell of a lot of lyrics, a lot of rhyming. Yeah. She can kill with a smile. She can wound with her eyes. So you can ruin your faith with her casual lies. That's right. the beginning, right? Beginning. So you're already just letting you letting us know. By the way, this lady I'm telling you about, she's problematic. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. She only reveals what she wants you to see. She hides like a child, but she's always a woman to me. Um I'd like a child is, uh, I mean, it's fine. She's not a child so that it doesn't come across that way. Right. But it's, uh, I think it's a nice image. Yeah. It's very weird to go into a love song with a bunch of negative qualities. Yeah. Here's a bunch of weird stuff this lady does. She can ruin your faith with her casual lies. Yeah. She's a liar in the second line. Here's an observation I've always had about this song, and I'm glad we're talking about it. It's a thing I've always thought about this song. The song only works as far as I'm concerned if the woman we're talking about is an unapologetic flirt. Sure. Because otherwise, some of the lyrics don't make sense 
in the context of <laughs> her understanding that this is your girlfriend or wife that you're right. telling us about. And so none of these experiences should matter to me currently, unless you guys break up and I move in on your old girlfriend or wife. But it makes a lot of sense if either they're in an open relationship. I don't think that's the case. Or, or she's one of those people, men and women do it, who like to find out that they're still desirable, even if they're in a relationship. So they're very flirty. Oh, they play the little games. Yeah. Just because they want to know, oh, I, I could hook up with somebody if I needed to. <laughs> and those are always good people to be in relationships with. This, you know, it's I, already, it's reminding me of another song where it's a similar description of a woman, but in that song, it's all, he's warning you about this woman who's dangerous. Yeah. Uh, stiletto. I'm thinking of Stiletto. Oh, yeah. Where it's a lot of the same, like, she's dangerous and shady and she lies and she, look out, be careful. Right. Uh, and this one is like, yeah, but I, I still like her. Hey, I wonder. Now, I'm really wondering this. Do you think Stiletto's written about the same woman just after things have gone south enough? <laughs> I mean, that is uh, a very common relationship trope where right? in the first month you're like, oh, she's like flirty. And sometimes she pretends to be somebody else and she like lies and it's, ooh, it's saucy and weird. And then a year later, you're like the same description. You're like, I'm so fucking tired. <laughs> it's like, come home and she's got a wig on. And <laughs> I, to call it niece. I work all day. I don't want Denise. She's got an English accent when I first dated her. No, there's no English <laughs> accent. What if that happened to somebody? Yeah, that'd be insane, right? <laughs> and what if that person was so kind of hoping for sex they were okay with it uh, oh, yeah yeah that'd be pathetic yeah would be yeah oh sorry <laughs> i'm slipping into norm <laughs> I, um, I, but then like instead of like oh she has all these negative qualities but she's always delightful to me yeah she's always a woman now what does so obviously always a woman we you know, certainly mean it in a genetic sense, but that's not what he means. So does he mean she's always romantic with me? She's always feminine? What does he mean? I don't know. I'm trying to suss it out. Does he mean um a woman is by necessity all of these complicated weird things okay i don't think so because he says but yeah i don't think so either all, all these weird things and qualities and games but she's always a woman to me now does he mean like she's a woman so that's good enough yeah does he, he mean, does he mean and i that with me She's the idealized version of what you'd hope she'd be, supportive and beautiful and feminine. With you, she's going to be kind of a prick, but that's your problem. That's your problem. She does it to me too, but I like it, so <laughs> not a problem here. Well, if that's what he means, then Billy Joel, I am with you. I, I am with you. <laughs> All right, let, me, let me finish this. She hides like uh, she can lead you to love. She can take you or leave you. See, that's what I mean about like she's flirting. Because she can yeah. leave you, not me, you to love. She can take you or leave you. So that's why I'm like, are they in an open relationship? <laughs> I think he's speaking more generically. Yeah. She can ask for the truth, but she'll never believe you. I've always liked that. Because I think we've all had relationships. It's just... We now know, oh, both genders do this. But back then, it was like, yeah, you know, woman who tells you she wants to know the truth, and you tell her, and she don't care what you had to say. Um, that's all people. 
but yeah, yeah. Um, it's definitely a frustrating part of trying to know another human being. She can ask for the truth, but she'll never believe you. And she'll take what you give her as long as it's free. Wow. I mean, that's just reasonable. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. As long as there's no strings attached. Yeah, give it to me. Yeah. Um, there's definitely uh, a flip side of that, of course, is that, that if that's entirely true, she'll take what you give her as long as it's free. That's a tough person to be in a relationship with. Because if I'm giving to you and your expectation is, sure, you can give to me as long as you understand I ain't going to do nothing for you. Right. Not necessarily a good relationship. Although is tit for tat necessarily a good relationship? Yeah. Would you rather have a series of gifts than a series of obligations? Yeah. Like, yeah, I will go out with your friends. But tomorrow night... You have to go out with my friends. Like, oh, well, that's not free. Yeah. And and somebody's friends are definitely worse. Yeah. yeah. And it's mine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's true. Uh, there's certainly a happy medium inside there, but you certainly don't want to just be going out with somebody who only takes, right? Right. We tried that. Yeah. Both of us on many occasions, I'm sure. Oh, sure. Yeah. Yeah. You uh, end up broke and tired. Yeah. And you end up telling yourself that they gave because otherwise, yeah. otherwise, what kind of an idiot am I? So there's like, well, you know, and then you end up going, uh, her time? <laughs> I got her time. Her time. Her time. Time is money. <laughs> uh, and you always end up being the one who gets in trouble yeah i gave you everything and you're mad at me <laughs> yeah but you're always a woman <laughs> but you're always a woman too jerry oh <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, all right you're up my brother uh she's yeah she steals like a thief <laughs> but she's always a woman to me See, uh, I like that her crimes are getting worse. Yeah. Informing the previous line. She'll yeah. take what you give her as long as it's free. Yeah, she steals like, like a thief. There's a little bit of bitterness, and you're the one who was like, well, you said it was free. That's not stealing. That it was free. Now, here I am with your friends. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and then it's our little bridge that fits yeah. so nicely. Great bridge. One of the better ones. Yes. Oh, she takes care of herself. She can wait if she wants. She's ahead of her time. Oh, and she never gives out. And she never gives in. She just changes her mind. This is a seems like a hard woman to date. Yeah. Which I think is his point. It's like this is a, a difficult person. Can I tell you though? But I like her anyway, yeah. or I like her because of it. Yeah. See, that's the thing. A lot of times, that's exactly why you like the person. Now, can I tell you uh, that she just changes her mind? Uh, she gives that. She never gives in. She just changes her mind. Might be my favorite lyric in this song because I I like that uh, because I can picture it was like if. If you were trying to talk the person into going to miniature golf. Yes. You know, and you're like, let's go miniature golfing. I don't want to go miniature golfing. Come on. I really want to go miniature golfing. I went to uh, regular golfing with your dumb friends yesterday. Tit for tat. Um, <laughs> today we're going mini golfing with my friends. I don't want to go mini golfing. I'm not going to go mini golfing. And then later on she goes, comes in and goes, you know what I was thinking? I'd like to go mini golfing. That's what I picture. Is she not <laughs> going to say, all right, I'll do this for you. She's going to say, you know, I was thinking I'd actually might enjoy going mini golfing. They have batting cages. <laughs> oh, nice. She can't concede. Now, now for you folks out there picturing what you find romantic, for me, it's mini golf. For you, it might be some other venue. 
maybe you're picturing laser tag. Yeah, uh, for me, it's a regular golf. Regular golf, very romantic. Regular full-size golf, I call it. <laughs> <laughs> um, they should start calling it full-size golf. <laughs> they should, and then the, the mini golf, they should just call it golf. <laughs> it's the PGA full-size golf tour. <laughs> <laughs> just to differentiate it. Yeah. You now don't want you... people looking around for the windmill. <laughs> exactly. It's not here. You're thinking yeah. of a different thing. We would have had the windmill, but it's a full, you, you wouldn't see it from where you're at anyway. So the other thing they should have is uh, PGA golf tournaments on mini golf courses. <laughs> you, my friend, know enough TV people. That's pitchable. That's very pitchable. That would be such a fun show where you get professional golfers. You get right. two decent comedians, one decent comedian and an actual color guy from regular golf who's mad all weekend because he's not enjoying the company of the comic. <laughs> Great. Oh, dude, let's pitch. That, that is a sell. That's sellable. That's what channel is that? That's ESPN for sure. ESPN two, at least. God, what a great Good idea. Fortis. What a great idea for a show. <laughs> it's more of a special, maybe a one-timer. The way a couple TV, times a season. The way TV is now, it's a 15 episode bye. Jesus. <laughs> and then you uh, have interviews with the golf guys in the batting cages while they're swinging. Right. As so, like a warm down. Yeah. How, how, what, and it's real questions. Like you got your first, you won your first green jacket in what was it? 1997. What was that like? Well, and then he gets injured. It ruins his regular job. <laughs> <laughs> like a fastball to the back of the hand <laughs> oh someone's gonna, someone's gonna steal this idea don't be surprised if uh the mini Dave. managers comes out and uh bruno mars is attached as a producer bruno mars and uh your buddy dave that's right they're pair up <laughs> steal a cool idea dude that's actually i i would watch that once my friend brian would watch it every day and complain right. about why he did. Yeah. Well. I know because he still watches Pawn Stars. God. <laughs> All right, I'll, uh, I'll read this next uh, three lines. What's the, is that a couplet? What is that? The, the triplet? I, this song, by the way, the lyrics are cut up weird. Yeah, I noticed that too. On this website. What is it? Uh, Google, yeah. Yeah. She'll promise you more than the Garden of Eden this next line then she'll carelessly cut you and laugh while you're bleeding this is not a healthy relationship crimes are getting worse oh yeah right now it's assault now it's assault with a deadly weapon but she brings out the best and the worst you can be hey that's for sure a thing about <laughs> yeah. i when as soon as i get stabbed a whole other side of me comes out <laughs> It's not the best problem. It's not the best in me. Oddly enough, for me, it is the best because oh. I'm, I'm good in a crisis. <laughs> That's great. I, uh, I'm all about crisis avoidance. Yeah. I don't like uh, crises. Or getting cut. Or getting cut. <laughs> and by the way, this is another straight up parallel to Stiletto. Um, she cuts you once, she cuts you twice. Yeah. And still you believe. You know what? I think I'm right. I think I've only ever seen Billy Joel wear long sleeve shirts. I think you're right. Hmm. Huh. <laughs> Autobiographical? Sir, do I need to call someone? Do you have somewhere where you can stay tonight? <laughs> uh, she only stabbed him in the forearms. That's right. She cut you once, she cut you twice. Wow, actually, yeah, there's a lot of a lot of women cutting them. Wow. <laughs> that's pretty brutal. At some point you gotta think it's you though. Yeah, that's true. If one woman stabs you, that's not a control group. Yeah. If two women stab you, you're inviting stabbing somehow. Yeah. 
And you and go to the third woman stabs you. Uh, that establishes the pattern. Yeah. You know those wood blocks that have knives in them that you have in the kitchen? Sure. And you, you go to Billy Joel's place and you're like, why do you also have one on the coffee table? <laughs> that doesn't, hmm. You like being stabbed. You like this. Why did she stab you? Well, it was the fifth time I said, come on, you got to cut me. Come on. Come on. Come on. I got a show tonight. It's the only way I can do <laughs> the it. The only way I can get amped up to do a show. <laughs> I got to sing Piano Man. Cut me. <laughs> I got to feel something. It. <laughs> it's either he needs it to get amped up to sing Piano Man or he was singing Piano Man <laughs> to his girlfriend. Which is like, you have to stop. Yeah, I get it. You play piano. I get it. You are dyslexic about cocktails. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's great. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yo uh, give me a beach blow job. What? <laughs> <laughs> oh, give me a beach on the sex. <laughs> Oh, all right. It's all right. So you were right in sort of in the middle. I don't know why there's a break here. I don't either, but go ahead. Blame it all on yourself. Because she's always a woman to me. Oh, she takes care of herself. She can wait if she wants. She's ahead of her time. Oh, she never gives out. She never gives in. She just changes her mind. I don't, why is she ahead of her time? Okay, so here's what I was thinking. Written in roughly 1977. Right. That was before uh, ladies used to stab dudes much. Yeah, right. She is ahead of her time in that regard. Ahead of her time. Is this a, a women's lib reference to a woman who's asserting herself more? Uh, is she ahead of her time yeah. because she could take care of herself? I think maybe that. I think he's going for like, she's a, a modern lady who uh, feels free to act weird <laughs> and uh, stab me and hide like a child. She also has a job, which is weird to me. <laughs> to be established in another song. It's just... The other day she was wearing pants. <laughs> kind of girl who might put on pants and stab me. And for some reason, the pants bothers me more. And I have decided she's a woman to me. Yeah. Despite the pants. Now, to, now we're not even joking. Sometimes when I hear the lyric, but she's always a woman to me. Sometimes I'm like, I bet a little bit. He just means it's very nice that they have sex. Yeah. Oh, definitely that. Yeah. Yeah. It's great. <laughs> yeah. Uh, these things all happen, but ultimately, I'm having sex, so we good. Yeah, and to the best of my knowledge, she's not having sex with you. She's not, is she? Because <laughs> she would. <laughs> she would, but just know she's going to cut you. Because <laughs> as we establish, she hides and lies. Yeah, so many. And changes her mind. <laughs> All right, so that was a chorus you got to say, say twice. So why don't you take us home? Oh, we're going home. Well, here's the thesis sentence. <laughs> you buried the lead. She is frequently kind and she's suddenly cruel. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, this is getting to the point where it's diagnosable. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> it's bipolar, right? Bipolar disorder. Uh, or, you know, the cluster B. Deficiencies, yeah. but she can do as she pleases she's nobody's fool and she can't be convicted she's earned her degree what does that mean i don't think it's i think those sentences are just next to each other i don't think he means that you can't convict somebody if they go to college <laughs> <laughs> i mean he's like saying she can't be convicted also, separately, she's earned her degree. I don't, it sounds, the way he sings it, 
it sounds like he's saying she can't be convicted because she's earned her degree. <laughs> yeah. And no one who went to college is ever going to jail. Although some correlation there. Yeah, well, that's true. She can't be convicted. I think that's like she'll snow the jury. Yeah. Even if you have the evidence, she'll win. Is it that or is it that when it comes down to it, yeah, you got problems with the things she does, but she has every right to do these things. Right. Um, assuming we mean metaphorical cuts, because you're not allowed to do that. You know, unless she, maybe she, oh, have we established whether or not she's a doctor? Well, she has a degree. So maybe. I oh, feel like it's an MFA. Yeah. <laughs> Because what if she's a doctor and she's uh, she was doing surgery and then she made a careless mistake and she just thought that was funny? I would accept that. It would be a weird thing to include in the song. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> About why you like her. Can't be convicted. She, all right. I like that. That's two different thoughts. She can't be convicted. Yeah, I think it's mostly she's allowed to do all this nonsense. You cannot like it. Yeah. But she's uh, she has a she's graduated from something. You know what? Thinking about it, and she can't be convicted is a good lyric to pair with the idea that she's ahead of her time and a modern woman. Yeah, because she's doing things that in the past women have, in fact, <laughs> been taken <laughs> to task for and possibly even convicted. Literally convicted. Yeah, at the very least, put in asylums because they questioned a husband or whatever right i don't know that billy joel's going that deep but that's real right and she's earned her degree which means somebody made the mistake of getting her learned uh, <laughs> that's where the trouble began <laughs> uh and then this is a weird line and the most she will do is throw shadows at you but she's always a woman to me yeah We've already established she'll do way worse things than, than shadow throwing. Yeah, but I, I interpret that going back to my original assumption that this is a guy who has a lady who's very flirtatious. Yeah. And that's what he's dealing with is letting another guy know, yeah, you know, I know she's, you know, she flashed you or whatever it is she did, or she did right. something less egregious, but still made eyes at you and said, uh, double entendres that I've, I've heard so much about. <laughs> yeah. But at the end of the day, you're, you're not going to have sex with her. I am. Right. Yeah. It, it is uh, the only place no, he mentions you in yeah. other places. Um, but it's a good couplet where she's throwing shadows at you, yeah. but she's a woman to me. Yeah. It, um, it reminds me. shadow is you're not seeing all of it. Right. Absolutely. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It could, it could mean that, right? She's getting, giving you a glimpse of who she is. Right. You think you know who she is based on her bar behavior. Yeah. <laughs> but i've seen her make scrambled eggs i like that read that's a good read this song reminds me a little bit of every breath you take in oh, that yeah. the song itself if you just listen to the song along with the music it's so pretty and it's so romantic right it isn't until you start to dissect the lyrics or listen to them even just in a perfunctory manner that you go, oh, well, no, no, this is less romantic than it is uh, damaged. Yeah, this is a uh, not good behavior. Yeah, <laughs> these are some problematic <laughs> human beings for sure. Which, you know, you need it for music. Yeah. You I mean, know, it makes for a hell of a song. Properly, it's not a very good song. Yeah, it uh, it's a hell of a song. It's like, I always like, when I would watch TV shows like Friends, I was always frustrated, or say Moonlighting. Moonlighting is the show that ruined it for everybody. 
<laughs> because <laughs> your two main characters got together and everybody decided that that's what ruined the show was them right. being happy when really it was probably bruce willis wanting to do movies more than that <laughs> or and or music or and or music yes bruno um but shows like friends you get ross and rachel together and people go oh but but there's no drama in two people being together so what not oh. in a relationship <laughs> right that's when the drama begins baby yeah people won't yes they will i'm just saying ross and rachel never should have broken in the first place Still. yeah 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 <laughs> i agree i do agree with ross that they were on a break they were clearly on a break and statistically most people believe that including jennifer aniston huh jennifer aniston because she was asked that well of course they were on a break she's in her head going God, rachel yeah she's in her head she's going that was 25 years ago <laughs> that's true i want to talk about the morning show no all right still that all right all right do you want to talk about my uh, heavy marijuana use no <laughs> <laughs> is she a, a fan of the marijuana uh she has been good for her yeah yeah you're not hurting anybody nope for the most part not even yourself is if you're, if you're cautious about it yeah so it would seem yeah there, it, it can raise issues if you have if you're prone to depression that's true and or schizophrenia or schizophrenia exactly so mm -hmm. i so i am not saying all of you should do it so this is not my fault if you make choices yeah it's bruno. better than uh, and if you're bruno mars uh, that's better than what you were doing, bud. Yeah. Stick to the pot. What was he doing? Uh, cocaine. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah. He got that's arrested. Good. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, yeah. So, chill out, Bruno. <laughs> <laughs> what a great song. And now, was this a number one? I don't think it was. I don't think it was. I think it got to three, maybe. Yeah. Because yeah. I only know that because I believe... We covered this in trivia one time. And didn't uh, have a number one until Glass Houses. Yeah. And by all rights, this should have been a number one. Yeah. I think retroactively. Yeah. It's probably, yeah, it's remembered that way for sure. It's everybody wants to hear the damn song for sure. Yeah. But then uh, I think he has a lot of songs like that, that over time, well, because the nature of his fan base is, you know, maniacs like us who just, <laughs> just yeah we're keeping it alive like to have four things right in the song she's ahead of her time that's right because we're the kind of people who like to have four things to listen to in the car that's it would you like a fifth thing no get out of the car i don't want a nope. fifth thing no you're walking now you have enough for, things just for bringing it up <laughs> yeah Something purchased after 1990? How dare you? By the way, I like your shirt. You got the buttons. You got the little Henley. Ooh. You like the lining? <laughs> <laughs> <That's nice. laughs> I'm gonna show you this. Hold on a second. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh boy. Oh, it's a matter of trust. Yes, it is. Good job. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck you, Dave. <laughs> <laughs> Hope you had fun. <laughs> Did you have you known the whole time? You're like, oh, yeah. No, I couldn't see what was happening. Yeah. I could only see the lady in the red sweatpants. Usually what I do is I'll, I look at the lyrics and I try to put pick something within the lyrics. Right. So that's where I get tripped up. Yeah. So if I'm doing big shot, it's going to be a spoon and a nose or whatever. Oh, I should do Big Shot sometime because that's a good song. Have we talked about that? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I should. We haven't. Yeah. Yeah, that's a great one. Yeah, that's a wonderful song. Sometime we should bring that up. But uh, this time I just went title because there's mostly the whole song is stuff you'd have a hard time finding a picture of. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's very uh, ethereal. Yeah. A lot of songs like that, by the way, when you're trying to put this puzzle together, a lot of like, I don't know how you'd 
you know, I like a person laughing at somebody bleeding. I could find that probably. Probably. But even not even for sure the exact right picture. Yeah, but, and I couldn't find anybody throwing shadows. But there she is. She is trusting those white people. Yes, there's a multiple levels of risks she's taking. <laughs> yeah, that is a, a, a matter of uh, too much trust. Yeah. A it's a matter of, of gullibility. A matter of social conditioning. <laughs> yeah. Because you've even bought into the fact that those idiots behind you are the accepted norm. Yeah, no. Look at the guy in the red jacket and his dumb beard. That's an accepted thing. They're not going to be able to catch her. No. The lady who's supposedly helping, where are you in relationship to her? You're not even near. Yeah, no, you're not going to, you're going to touch her on her way down. You know what? The green shirt guy's the only one. It's all on him. You guys are lousy friends. Nobody's got shoes on for traction. What the hell is wrong? Is she wearing shoes? Hold on a minute. <laughs> no she's not wearing shoes either wearing shoes they're on concrete you're gonna have to get one of them shots because you're gonna get tetanus or something oh you're outdoors i know it looks clean there's gonna be rat feces somewhere yeah there's an aloe plant right there probably a rat living in there oh man and again man is is the guy in the green shirt her boyfriend? Why is she even know. have to do this? He maybe is hoping to be. Yeah. I don't know. Is it a cult? Is this a this could be a compound? <laughs> it's maybe like some kind of weird cult baptism. Yeah, this, I think maybe in retrospect, this is a compound. They don't have shoes because they take them, so you can't leave. Oh uh, yeah. Wow, levels. Yeah, I, and for sure, I'm just going to close it saying, for sh in case she's watching, lady with the ponytail, you're not helping. Yeah, no. She probably found that out real fast. Yeah. A guy in the green shirt, the next picture is him going, come on, what, is it just me? <laughs> the next picture is him pulling out his back. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'll get that picture, and now you'll have to guess what him pulling out his back is in reference to. <laughs> Great. Oh. Uh, I got a little trivia question. All right, breakout. On the list of, say, the 20 greatest selling selling artists of all time. Yeah. Where's Billy Joel place? Second. <laughs> you are a fan. Sixth. Six is really good. Six is really good. Who's in front of him? Well, there's the Beatles. Yeah. Oh, you know, and if I'd have thought about it, there's the Beatles. There's Michael Jackson is ahead of him. Nope. No. He's ahead of Michael Jackson. Oh, fantastic. Okay. So we got the Beatles. We've got uh, Eagles. The Eagles, correct. Okay. Um, boy, diminishing returns here. Um, <laughs> Eagles, um, maybe Britney Spears. No, not I mean, enough albums. Not enough albums, yeah. Okay, Eagles. Uh, oh, Barbara Streisand? No. Oh, okay. That always, that always surprises maybe. me. Huh? Maybe the king of rock and roll? Elvis Presley, absolutely. Okay. Uh, Frank Sinatra. No. Okay. Uh, Rolling Stones. <laughs> no stones. This list bothers me. Um, <laughs> it's a weird one. Yeah. Uh, Judy Garland. <laughs> Judy Garland? <laughs> How old are you? <laughs> All right. So we got the Beatles. We got, you got not my Prince. Not Prince. All right. Let me know what they are. <laughs> All right. You got the Beatles. Yeah. Eagles. Elvis. Elvis. Got the Eagles. Led Zeppelin. Led Zeppelin. Weirdly enough. 
And uh, jump out of the genre, Garth Brooks. Garth Brooks, of course. Sold a trillion albums. You know what's wild about the Garth Brooks as an example is because, because he put his heyday to rest because he just more or less decided he was done. Yep. He's not done now, though. He's back, right? He's around. He's around. <laughs> But because he did kind of just enter the pop culture zeitgeist and then just went later, you forget yeah. about him. You're not going to see him on the list, and yet it makes so much sense. He had like a five-year run where every album sold billions of copies. Right. And then and, he went away. And his music, a bit like Billy Joel's and like the Beatles and like the Eagles, of course, his music's good enough to have staying power to be rediscovered by new people. Yes. So I think there are young people at the concerts. I think that's a critical part of this statistic, I bet. Yes, I agree. Because, uh, you know, you're not, you're not rediscovering Herman's Hermits. No, sadly. Yeah. You should, though. I don't understand how the hell Frank's not on that list. I don't get it either. I wonder if it's the way it's compiled too, because for a big chunk of Frank's career, he was his era's version of a front man for a big band. I want to say he sang for Tommy Dorsey. Okay, that sounds and, right. Yeah, and and it was considered risky at the time for him to go out on his own and just be a crooner, mainly because that wasn't exactly a thing, really. Right. Because it was the era where the band leader, what a weird era in music, by the way. <laughs> yeah. Where you were like, oh, the singer. Cumbersome. Real cumbersome. Yeah. Oh, the singer. Who cares about that guy? Let's, uh, let's what's the name of the guy with a stick? That's who I care about. <laughs> That's my guy. <laughs> <laughs> but the guy who, uh, points at the trombones. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But that my dad was from that era, and it's such a funny era that it was like, oh, I love this song. I can't wait to buy the sheet music. <laughs> yeah. Who knows who led in that? Yeah. What is that? Um, yeah, I think it also has a lot to do with the marketing yeah. era that started in probably the 60s. True. It was just a whole different kind of machine to push music out. And the amount of people who would actually buy music from you. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You got to remember that too, because there's a ton of people who probably wouldn't have had bought a record of Frank's because they don't have a record player. They right. got radio. Yeah. Your family would get it. Yeah. You go, well, we're driving over to dad's house to listen to some Sinatras. <laughs> <laughs> They'd say. Yeah. Do you want to go? Everybody pile into the Nash. <laughs> <laughs> We're heading over. Oh, I bet that's true. And of course, there's the other adjusted for inflation nonsense. Yes. And the multiple platforms. Yeah. Like I could say that I personally probably have like four copies of Piano Man. <laughs> I have vinyl and CD, and then I have like a download. Yeah. And considering uh, how little you like it, that's incredible. <laughs> There's other good stuff on the album. Indeed. Indeed there is. <laughs> uh, well, I think... How does Alex buy that... music? He hate buys music. <laughs> Motherfucker. <laughs> He's going to get it right one of these times. <laughs> Gin and tonic. <laughs> you can rhyme supersonic with it. <laughs> <laughs> Joel's song with the word supersonic just really appeals to me. That'd be really great. Right, so um, I'm going to say since we since it came up more than once, I think we should talk about Stiletto next time. Awesome. And that is a prominent mm -hmm. saxophone. Right? Yeah, that's uh, his Latin jazz vibe. <laughs> it's a good song, too. That's good a good old song. song. Yeah, still it was compare cool. and contrast. Yeah, I really like that idea, and you know what that'll be? That'll be episode forty. It'll be the big four zero. Yep, 
that's the one where you have to have a party and there were more people there than you realize you wanted. <laughs> yeah, that seems right. Some decades ago, it's got to be at least a decade ago, I decided that on my birthday, I would play poker with the same three or four dudes and we would play for money. And the wife of one of the dudes, fantastic woman who recently sold a screenplay. By the way, she's the sweetest girl in the world. And all the stuff she writes are like horror murder things. And she's really good at it. <laughs> Great. And she's very talented. She wrote a part for me in this one thing where I play the sad sack who kind of starts dating the slightly younger woman who murders me. Great. And I was like, wow, it's, I relate to everything. <laughs> in fact, I consider the, eight, the ending aspirational. <laughs> Fantastic. But anyway, she would always make me a cake of some kind or a cheesecake. And it's very good. And, and it's always vegan. I'm not vegan. <laughs> but she's one of these people who can make a vegan cheesecake that a meaty idiot will go, oh, this is delicious. Oh, great. Yeah. Perfect. And that's why you guys tuned in. <laughs> Episode 40, <laughs> we're going to be talking about stiletto. And we're going to get to the bottom of this relationship. I'm going to do some research. All right. Let me know what you find out. I'm worried about her. Yeah, she's worried about her. Yeah. You got to tell. I'm, I'm not going to get in the middle of it. I'm, I'm just, she just doesn't need that. But I'm at least going to see if I can talk to some people at, at, uh, at Getty UN. Images. <laughs> yeah, the UN. I was oh, the UN. Yeah, they're in town. Everybody's in. So now's yeah. the time. Yeah. So keep the faith, lady. Oh, keeping the faith. Oh, yeah. And uh, <laughs> shave, you get a better haircut, beardo. <laughs> yeah, that's terrible. <laughs> <laughs> it's a bad haircut. I don't care what anybody says. Hey, thank you for listening. And uh, you folks have wonderful haircuts. Oh, pandering. <laughs>